Now, when it comes to importing an image in Inkscape, what you may find, as I did when you're first starting out, is that it imports not as a path, but as a rasterized image. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to get around it. Hello again my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you the trace bitmap function. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now it's worth mentioning that every single image that you see me using in today's video was obtained from pexels.com, that's P-E-X-E-L-S. It is one of my favorite websites when it comes to royalty free and free to use images and videos. Go check them out. Trust me, you'll love it. Now, if you haven't got the trace bitmap menu open, you can open it in the right hand side. But if you haven't got it open by default, you can come to pass and open trace bitmap, which is right near the top of the menu. When you press this, it will open up this little menu here now to begin with we are just going to start with a single scan now firstly we can get rid of this little box over here and we're just going to select the image in particular that we want now at the moment i have got it set to single scan brightness cutoff in layman's terms the brightness cutoff will distinguish between all the light and the dark areas within your image and then output what they think is the black and white version. So as you can see here, there is a lot of blotches from the background, but we have still got a very, very convincing butterfly in the center. Now by holding and dragging the threshold bar, you can change just how much of the image it sees like so now if I have the threshold there around 0.237 you can see that this butterfly shape is no longer connected to anything around the outside of it that is exactly what we need this is a live preview of what changes are going to happen when you click apply so let's click apply now, as you can see, it hasn't got rid of my old picture. It has simply created a copy in the vector format that we selected. Now, we can move this down, and as you can see, we have a very convincing butterfly in the center, but we have got all these black shapes around the outside. But fear not, these are very easy to get rid of. Now, all we have to do is use the path commands like I have done in a previous tutorial. We are going to get the Bezier tool and we are simply just going to make a shape around the butterfly. With that selected, we can now select the new vector path of the butterfly. And now with both of them selected, we can go to path intersection. And as you can see, we now have a separate shape for the butterfly. But we are not done. There is a lot more to the trace bitmap. If we select the main picture and then come back to the trace bitmap menu, we can select edge detection. And I'm going to show you exactly what it's like. Instead of going off light and dark, this one is going to try and detect every single sharp edge that it can find. So now when I trace bitmap and I drag this one over, as you can see, it gives a completely different look to exactly the same object. And there is one more single scan method that I would like to show you, and that is auto trace. This is going to be the one that is the most detailed. Now, as you can see, we have got everything that we had before. Now, when it comes to the speckles, the smooth corners and the optimize, I have left them all on default. I never seem to change these. I just think that these default settings are perfect for most projects. Now, this is going to take a while. But once it's done, we can click and drag it off. And as you can see, we get much more detail. 
Now that is single scan. Single scan will do pretty much whatever you would like. But multicolor scan is quite different because it doesn't just quantify between lights and darks or edges and color. It will always try and stay as close to the original image that you imported as humanly possible. So first we have the brightness steps. Then we have colors, grays, and of course we have the full color auto trace. Now when it comes to a multicolor scan, I will always choose to have smooth, stack, and sometimes remove background. If it is a very plain background, then you will find that it works really, really well. But sometimes with busy backgrounds like this one, it's very, very hard to distinguish between the background and the image you want to keep. In this case, it's very hard to distinguish the flowers from the butterfly. But you can scan more and more times. Now, if I've selected Eight, that is going to give me eight layered copies of the original picture. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now with eight scans, what that is doing in layman's terms is it's scanning eight different colors from the original image. If you want more colors, then you just increase the steps and you can increase it quite a lot as well. So 256 colors, 256 scans that will mean that it's scanning every single color in the image even when it can't find that color like for example nighttime blue there's no nighttime blue in here but there is a very light shade of blue within the butterfly meaning it will pick up the light shade of blue but nothing else now the best way to show you what i mean about multiple scans is by having the number of scans low I will be able to double click on the new image and as you can see look at all those nodes now we can move each layer away from each other and as you can tell it's made up of multiple layers so you can change the colors in any way you want layer them back on top of each other and come up with some very abstract and very effective designs. Like this one, for example, which took me all of five minutes. So what about colors? Well, colors is exactly the same, except it goes full color instead of grayscale. But as for grays, it heavily leans into the grays, making lots of different layers, but only with grays, whites, and blacks. And auto trace. Just like the original auto trace in a single scan, the auto trace feature is slower and it will take up a lot of RAM too. So this is something you need to be aware of. Now, before we go any further, here is a disclaimer. If you have got very underwhelming hardware within your PC, Mac or laptop, then you might run into a lot of issues whilst using trace bitmap. The reason for this is because when you trace bitmap a rastified image, you are going to get a lot of nodes. And I mean a lot. And the more nodes you have got, the harder it is for your hardware to keep track of all of them. So please keep that in mind and if need be, reduce the size of the picture you are using. Because as you can see on screen right now, even though I am using a simple looking image, the amount of nodes that this created was a lot and kept making my PC slow right down. And there you go, that is your trace bitmap feature. Now there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of while using the trace bitmap. If you use things that are highly detailed, or even if they don't look highly detailed, I'm talking about the images that are high in shading or high in contrast. These are going to be a lot more demanding for your PC when using the trace bitmap feature. 
But that's it, my friends. If this video was helpful for you, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you would like to try it for yourself, I suggest going and experimenting with some random images to see which ones work and which ones don't, just like I did. In the end, you will become a pro when it comes to importing images within your Inkscape project. So, I hope to see your designs soon. If you want them featured in a future video, please by all means send them in. I do not mind spreading some positivity among all the artists in the world. So until next time, I'm going to bid you all a fun farewell. Say thank you for watching and remember, stay creative, stay artsy and I'll see you in the next one.